From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Nando's in the UK and India. This is Food Wars. If you're ordering chicken for one person, it comes in three sizes at a UK Nando's. As a quarter chicken, as a half chicken, or as a whole chicken. Chicken for one person here in Nando's India comes in the form of a quarter chicken, which is one piece, or a half chicken, which is two pieces. You can also get a whole chicken, but it only comes in the form of a sharing platter, the largest of which is a jumbo platter, two whole chickens, and five large sides. I'm excited to eat this, but all I need now is friends. So, hit me up. The largest item in the UK is the family platter. It comes with two whole chickens, as well as five large sides. Family of one. I could eat this. What about some other things from the Nando's menu? Well, in the UK, you can get a grilled chicken burger in two sizes as a single or as a double. Nando's India also sells chicken burgers and offers customers the option to double their chicken. So you can get a single chicken burger or double it to a double chicken burger. Nando's India serves chicken wings, but only in one size, a pack of four. Wings from a UK Nando's come in four portion sizes, as a three piece, as a five piece, as a 10 piece and a 15 piece. It's really weird being the country with the biggest sizes for a change. Joe, I miss you. Now the classic side for any order of Nando's in the UK is a side of peri-peri chips. I'm allowed to call them chips, not fries, because Joe's not in this video. In the UK, these come in two sizes, regular and large. Here in Nando's India, they're advertised not as chips, but as fries, because that's what they are, Harry, you weirdo. I'm gonna weigh them, you get them in two sizes, either regular or large. Let me weigh the regular. It's 100 grams on the dot. Nice, next. 418 grams. No, 408 grams. 175 grams in the large. I don't know how to read. Here is everything on the menu at a UK Nando's that you won't find in India. This is everything you'll find on the menu at Nando's India that you will not find in the UK. We'll start with the chicken. Now, when you order chicken at Nando's, they'll ask you to pick a spice level. We have quite a few of these, most of which are shared with India, except for two. Firstly, we have pimenta spice. I think this is limited edition, and it sits somewhere between medium and hot on the spice scale. And our other exclusive spice is peri tamer. As the name suggests, this is quite a mild tame spice. It sits somewhere between mild and basically plain chicken. I think it's a slightly sweeter glaze than you might find on the regular peri peri spice. Here in India, we just get our chicken in the classic scale of plain, lemon and herb, mild, hot, and extra hot. I'm willing to bet that our extra hot blows the UK extra hot out of the water. You see this tongue? This tongue can take spice. Oh my God, is this some kind of joke? It's like tickling me, it's teasing me with spice. This is child's play. I will say I love how the UK Nando's has two extra flavors. I wish India Nando's experimented more. We're in India, dude. There are so many spices. But what we lack in spices, we make up for in mains. Number one, Creamy cashew chicken with spicy rice. Damn good. Okay, now on to the next main. This is chicken cataplana. Cataplana is a type of Portuguese clam shaped stove, cooking pot. And they've also served it with a yogurt dip. So using a cataplana is apparently healthier because you end up using less fats to cook your meat and your veggies. Next up, we're having chicken espetada, or as I like to call it, chicken espetada. I've been fired from this show 16 times this season. I imagine they take the pieces of chicken, put them in skewers, put the marinade. So Nando's is a Portuguese-inspired South African restaurant. So most of the recipes are things that were developed by Portuguese explorers when they were in South Africa. We also have a lot of cuisine that's inspired by our uh, former colonial overlords back in Portugal. In fact, Goa, which is our smallest state here in India, was where the Portuguese first settled, and so a lot of the cuisine is derived and inspired by Portuguese cuisine. We have a couple of chicken mains of our own, starting with boneless thighs. These come in orders of four, and you can get them in any of the standard Nando's spice levels. And our other chicken exclusive is this, wing roulette. So wing roulette is an order of 10 wings, and it's a variety of the Nando's spices. The idea is that you'll get some of these, share them with your friends. Some of you might get hit with an extra hot wing, whereas others might get off easy with a mild. When I go to Nando's, I'm generally going for medium or hot. I'm not trying to be a hero. If I'm going for extra hot, I'm just not actually gonna taste the food. It's just gonna kind of hurt. I may also add a little bit of the kind of garlic and herb sauce, which adds a little bit of spice to it. Or also I've used ketchup in the past, which my friends have lambasted me for, so don't do that. Good chicken though. We also have some meal deals. These are more affordable options and you will not find them in the UK. 
Let's start off with the first one, which is pulled chicken sliders. Oh my god. This is like gourmet dining. I think I would need to eat three of these to feel considerably full. Unfortunately, they only give you two. Next up is a pulled chicken burger. Oh my mother load of chicken. That is a lot of pulled chicken. It needs a sauce. Did I just eat a part that doesn't have sauce? Next up, we have chicken tigela, which is basically grilled chicken, some corn, some roasted veggies, and tomato. And this is served with some spicy rice. They've also given like a bunch of veggies. Nando's is really trying to get our vitamins in. But take a look at the tigela itself. It's got a bed of rice underneath, but on top there's some pulled chicken, a lot of grilled onions, and a lot of finely chopped capsicum. Next up, you have the option of a pulled chicken wrap. I mean, it looks like a wrap. Or you can also get a pulled chicken pita. Damn, this looks like a donor kebab. I guess the true test of whether Nando's is putting a lot of effort into their food is whether their wraps and their uh, pita taste good. Let's go. Miles better than any other fast food restaurant. Alongside those, you can get a tub of veggies. So next up is chicken skewers for a kebab eating nation. Good job, Nando's. You get these along with some pita bread and a couple of salsas. You get a yogurt sauce and some salsa. Next up, we have Portuguese chicken and gravy. And if you can't tell from my face, I'm having a great time. Ooh, boy. Look at that. It looks like there's tadka on top, dude. Oh my God. What is a tadka, you ask? Basically, it's the best way to finish off a curry here in India. We take oil, heat it, add some spices in there, temper them and then pour them over our curry. And our final meal deal dish is saucy chicken strips in spicy rice. I'm not gonna lie, this one looks like the most boring option out of everything here. Let's look at some of the burgers and wraps from Nando's. In the UK, we have a couple of exclusive options. Firstly, we have the Sunset Burger. If I had to hazard a guess as to why this was called the Sunset Burger, it might be because you kind of get a sunset yellow, orange, red effect going with the cheese, the chicken and the chutney, which looks very pretty. I haven't had this before. I wouldn't normally order it at Nando's, but it's actually very, very good. The bun is slightly different to the regular burger buns that we get. It's a little bit more kind of spongy and pillowy. And that chutney stuff is delicious. Very sweet, a little bit smoky. Then we also have the Fino Pitta. I really love the packaging of this. It's great for delivery. You just tear straight through the middle. Not like that. And then pop that off. You have a nicely preserved upright pitta. Now on a Fino Pitta, you get chicken thighs, you get some salad, you get peronese, you get halloumi, and I think there's also some caramelized onions in there as well. I'll be honest, if I'm going to Nando's, this is what I'm getting. It's kind of got all my favorite Nando's things in one little package. They took it off the menu for the pandemic. They've recently brought it back, which I am thrilled about because I missed it dearly. The cheeky Nando's levels, off the charts right now. We have a couple of exclusive burgers and wrap flavors of our own, starting with the chicken Caesar salad wrap. I kind of like that packaging. Let's see how this tastes. That is a messed up way to eat a wrap. Eat it from the top, not from the side, please, Nikhil. Wow. Next up is the Perry cheeseburger, which also comes as a wrap or in pita form. Look at the juices dripping off this thing, man. That's what I'm talking about. This flavor has just taken India by storm in the past few decades. It's part of the trifecta of ingredients that are red velvet, matcha, and peri peri that people just love to put into every menu over here. Peri peri, if you don't know, is a spice mix that was discovered by Portuguese explorers when they were settling slash pillaging South African countries like South Africa and Mozambique. On the subject of foreigners coming to a place and taking things from it, I would like to formally apologize to India from the UK. Feel free to come and take your stuff back from the British Museum whenever's convenient. I feel like most Indians identify peri peri as the little packets of peri peri you get at McDonald's and you pour them into your fries and shake them to get peri peri fries. I feel like when they come to Nando's, they might find it not spicy enough. If you don't eat meat, Nando's is actually pretty good for vegetarian and vegan options in the UK. First up, we have the Great Imitator Wrap. It doesn't look very appealing right now. However, the Great Imitator is Nando's version of fake chicken. I think it's made with pea protein and by all accounts, I've heard it's pretty good. Then we have the Beanie Burger. As the name would suggest, it's a bean patty. Also comes with, I believe, an egg-free mayo, some salad as well. Then we have a spiced chickpea burger. It's kind of similar to the beanie burger. However, once again, as the name would suggest, the patty is predominantly made of chickpeas. This one actually mirrors the sunset burger a little more because it's got the same bun and also has some of that 
red pepper chutney. And then finally, we have a portobello mushroom and halloumi pita. It's a pita bread with a big portobello mushroom inside, as well as some salad, some halloumi, and more of that red pepper chutney. Pretty much every fast food restaurant here in India serves vegetarian food because a huge percentage of the country is vegetarian. Having said that, Nando's actually had quite a few non-vegetarian options, which is very cool to see in a restaurant like this. So let's go off the list of vegetarian food now, starting with creamy cashew paneer and spicy rice. So this is the same thing as the creamy cashew chicken, except they've replaced it with chunks of cottage cheese and it just looks delicious. Let's see if Nando's has done paneer right. It's really nice. And it's not as chewy. It's soft, soft paneer at a fast food chain, unheard of. The next vegetarian dish is called something exotic. Ooh, it's a mystery. Even they don't know what it could be. And it is. What the heck? I, okay, I did not expect to see this. It's watermelon and paneer. You know what Nando's? Watermelon and paneer, you really are walking the line between creativity and abomination. No, those are kind of weird together, but I think overall, this is a fun dish. And they serve it along with a three bean salad. The three beans are chickpea, rajma, and uh, some other one. Let's taste. Even this is flavorful. What's going on? Okay, now we're moving on to a vegetarian version of the cataplana. They have tossed the same vegetables, but this time, along with paneer and some chickpea. I only taste the chickpea. Very nice. This is easily the best food I've had on Food Wars. Hands. Okay, next up we have a vegetarian version of the espetada as well. Look at this. This is probably the best veg skewer I've seen in my life. It's just too beautiful, I can't eat it. I must frame this in my home. Also, they serve with garlic bread because this isn't enough apparently. The first one is a veg burger. They serve it with a coleslaw. It's a run of the mill frozen patty. It's all right. This is probably the most underwhelming thing on the menu so far. And finally, they have a mushroom and paneer burger. In both of these options, you can get along with a wrap or pita. They have put a huge chunk of paneer in there. Have you seen a paneer this big? I didn't even know they made this. Shit. Burger. When there's good food in the show, I'm so happy. And that's not all. There are more vegetarian options from the meal deal section. Let's go from the top. First off, we have veg sliders. These ones have patties instead of full chicken. Next up, you can get a veg tigella. This one has paneer. So same thing, it's a bed of rice, some chopped veggies on top with, with paneer as the protein. It's served along with potato wedges. Next up, we have paneer skewers that you can get along with either spiced rice or with some pita bread. Very similar to the skewers we had with chicken and they seem to have the same sauce as well. They're served along with either pita bread or spiced rice. You can choose which option of side. And you also get a salsa as well as a yogurt dip. I always feel like it's hard to do skewers with paneer because it's such a delicate ingredient that if you fry it too much, it gets too rubbery. Oh, is that a piece of pineapple then? Oh, there's a lot of thought put into these dishes. Nando's is a class apart. It's just a class apart. And finally, we have a very simple option at the end. It's a roasted veg and some grilled paneer. I'd probably skip this one. Next up, the UK exclusive starters. First up, we've got some sweet potato wedges and garlic perronets. For some reason, they've also mixed in a bunch of regular chips as well. I don't know if that's normal because I'm traditionally not gonna order sweet potato fries. If you've watched Food Wars for a long time, you will know my thoughts on sweet potato, namely that they are bad. It's just like someone took a chip and went, how can we make this floppier? I know. The garlic paronets, however, very tasty. Would recommend getting a side of this next time you're in Nando's. Also exclusive to the UK are peri peri nuts. You can start your meal off with a combination of, I think, cashews, almonds, and maybe macadamia nuts, all coated in their signature peri-peri spice. I'm usually pretty good at this, let's find out. In the UK, you can also get fried halloumi sticks and a dip of your choice. However, unfortunately, the restaurant forgot ours. Here's what they're supposed to look like. Neither of these are exclusive, but in both countries, you can also start with hummus and olives. India has a variety of options, starting with the cheesy fiesta fries. Seems pretty straightforward, but let's see if it is a fiesta. Oh my God. Bro, their presentation is off the charts. Look at this. Look at this. Everybody marvel at the presentation. 
Okay, I will say these have been in the cold for a while, so they may not taste as good as when they're fresh. And I am right. Next up, they have cheesy fiesta chicken. Boom! It's full chicken, grilled onions, same cheese, and I imagine there's fries underneath. Next up, they have something called the sweet potato and corn snack. Whoa! Why is their food so beautiful? There's corn, there's uh, bits of uh, red paprika, some chopped parsley, but also it's pieces of thinly sliced lemon. That's new. Oh! Are you supposed to eat that? It's interesting. I don't know if I'd serve lemon pieces in my salad. Next up, we have uh, four piece wings, but these ones are spicy tangy wings. They look quite delicious. I'm gonna sprinkle some lemon on there. I am disproportionately jealous of that little lemon wedge with the wings. Why don't we have that? Very little touch, lovely bit of freshness to your wing. Forget about it. I have to be honest, pretty bland. Not tasting any spice, not getting any tang. These are the most underwhelming things on the menu so far. And now for something I did not expect to see on the Nando's menu at all. We have a creamy cashew paneer and chicken naan. More like Nando's, am I right guys? Bro, why is all their food looking like art that I can hang up on my wall? Okay, so this naan has the chicken, so this is the naan wedge naan. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and take a bite. See how it tastes. It's damn good. The gravy on top is very similar to a butter chicken. It's got a lot of sweetness and richness. You can tell there's cashew in it, but they've also sprinkled on a lot of green chili, some coriander and chopped onions. So there is a nice kick of spice and they've just drizzled a lot of malai on top. So it's creamy. This is what it would be like if India had to have a pizza. Bang it. Also, they serve it with uh, something called Perine's dip. Are you sure this is for this? Let's just avoid it. It's just like a huge tub of mayonnaise. But it's perinaise apparently. For those looking for a healthier option, Nando's also offers salads. There are two main options in the UK. Firstly, we have this quinoa and peri tomato salad. This actually looks pretty good, I have to say. It looks like kind of sun-dried tomatoes, some lettuce, some dressing, some of these little crunchy crouton cracker things, and of course, quinoa. And our other salad option is the delightfully named Rainbow Bowl. Now the very colorful Rainbow Bowl comes with some hummus, some coleslaw, some tennis stem broccoli, there's some grains down in the corner, and I think some shredded carrot as well. I love tennis stem broccoli, and will fight to the death tennis stem broccoli. By default, the salads come plain, but you can also add chicken breast, chicken thighs, fake chicken, or beanie patties to any of them. Here at Nando's India, we have salad options of our own, starting with the Mediterranean salad, ooh la la. Opa! Is that something Mediterranean? Next up, we have an Algarve salad. Looks pretty much the same, minus the olives, plus some cashew nuts and a lot of uh, sun-dried chili or tomatoes. Then we have a quinoa salad for those of you who are monsters and can't eat rice like a normal person. And finally, we have a Caesar salad. And the Caesar salad comes with a dressing. Now, all of those salads we ordered are vegetarian, but you can optionally get some chicken strips if you need more protein in there. Then we're onto the sides. In the UK, you can get quite a few exclusive sides to go along with your peri-peri chips. First up, we have rainbow slaw, which is coleslaw filled with Skittles. No, it's not. It's just coleslaw. But kind of colorful. We also have a mixed leaf salad. A little box of leaves. Oh, there's some tomato and cucumber in there as well. This one is spiced grains with butternut squash, which actually sounds pretty good. Some grains in there, I think that's feta cheese, some green beans and butternut squash. Next up, we have creamy mashed potato. It's mashed potato. You can also get a side of just some long stem broccoli. This one looks a little more sad than the one that was on the salad, but still great. There's some garlic in there as well. Nice touch. And then finally, we can get macho peas. Peas for macho men, just like me. I wasn't really sure where to put these, but there are a couple of extra things which you can add onto pretty much any order, so I guess they kind of count as sides. First up, you can just buy a couple of pieces of grilled halloumi from Anandos in the UK. For those of you who don't know, halloumi is a cheese which I think is made with sometimes a mixture of sheep and goat's milk predominantly produced in Cyprus. It's an interesting cheese. When you bite into it, it doesn't really give. It's got a kind of like rubbery texture. 
I personally find it very satisfying to eat, as do a lot of British people. I think we're responsible for something like 80% of the Cyprus halloumi consumption in the world, which is kind of wild, but yeah, it's pretty good. It like squeaks on your teeth when you eat it. The other sorts of side options include just one whole portobello mushroom. This might have looked okay when it was hot. You can also just get a single plain tortilla from Nando's. I guess the idea is that you could kind of buy maybe the halloumi, the mushroom, and a couple of other bits and sauces and create your own wrap or own burrito situation. But personally, I don't think it's worth doing that. Just buy a pre-assembled one. Options for sides here at an Indian Nando's, you can get potato wedgies. I already showed wedgies. <laughs> no, no, they're not wedgies. The potato wedges. Run of the mill potato wedges. You can also get some char grilled veg. In fact, they give you a lot. You can also get a three bean salad, which looks really colorful and has like a soupy liquid that I want to try. Lentil soup, you say? Nay, I want three bean salad water. Next up, we have a Portuguese salad. Looks pretty straightforward. I have no idea what makes this Portuguese. Is it the olives? Probably. And finally, you can just get a tub of feta cheese. They've given me six cubes of feta cheese. Yeah. Cool. Nando's actually has quite a few dessert options in the UK. If you're in store, many of the shops will have an option for bottomless frozen yogurt. So you can have that in the flavors of vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, or mango. In store and also on delivery, you can get a few more options, including a naughty natta. This is Nando's take on a Portuguese egg custard tart, AKA pasta de nada. I probably butchered the pronunciation of that. If I take myself out to Nando's and I'm feeling uh, bougie, I'll probably end my meal with one of these because I love these things. We can also get a salted caramel brownie. Look at that, it's very pretty. It's got little gold sprinkles on it. I'm describing more foods as pretty. It's been the theme of today, but they are kind of pretty. Next, we have a chocolate cake, which is a slice of what looks like a pretty good, gooey, kind of indulgent chocolate cake. Pretty moist. And then we also have this gooey caramel cheesecake. This is actually really good. I'm a cheesecake fan, but this is a great example of a cheesecake. I had it for the first time, I think, when we filmed the UK versus US Nando's. Go watch it now, highly recommend. We don't share any desserts with the UK, but we have our own dessert, starting with an ice cream and hot chocolate, but they don't deliver it, so here's an image of it, I guess. Looks pretty good, looks nice. Then we have a series of cakes, starting with a chocolate cake. It's parceled in a burger case, which is kind of weird, but dude, look at this, it's a thick, Moist, fat cake. I must taste for science. Appropriately humid. Next up, a red velvet cake. What did I say? The trifecta of ingredients. I am surprised there's no matcha milkshake at the end of this. They have to fit in red velvet in every restaurant. Peri peri red velvet and matcha. And finally, we have an out and out cheesecake. Honestly, all of these desserts are okay. I'd probably skip the dessert here. Last but by no means least, let's talk about the drinks. If you go into a restaurant at Nando's in the UK, you can get bottomless fizzy drinks, including Coke, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, Sprite, and Fanta. Now, some people will ask for a free glass of tap water and then use that at the fizzy drink fountains to help themselves to free fizzy drinks. But I personally have definitely never done that and would not encourage that kind of flagrantly illegal behavior whatsoever. On delivery, we do also have a few exclusive drink options. The first options are these bottle green cordials. For those of you who aren't familiar with cordials, it's like a flavor concentrate. So what you'll do is you'll put a few splashes of this into a glass, top it up with water, and then you have a drink which you can actually consume. I kind of thought these would come pre-mixed, so I was a little bit surprised to see just bottles of the cordial itself. But I guess you can uh, make yourself some squash at home. This is Rooibos? Roy, 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 Roy I don't, I don't know how to pronounce this. Rooibos teas, which are flavored with things like lemon, peach, and berry. And finally, we have Gingerella by Karma Drinks. This is just a ginger ale. We can also get bottomless soda refills here in India, but our bottled options are fresh lime soda and two iced tea options. By the way, I don't know if fresh lime soda is a big thing abroad, but over here in India, it is the number one drink for middle-class families. When you go out with your family, each person of the family has a different order for fresh lime soda. Some like it with just salt, some like it just sweet, some like it with sweet and salt, and some monsters like it with no salt or sugar. This is from a company called Brew House, a tea brewing company. This is supposed to be a mojito lemon iced tea. It's nice. And next, a peach iced tea. 
it's nice. Nando's also offers these drinks called designer drinks, which seem to be non-alcoholic soft drink cocktails. It seems like they just took 7-Up and blended them to form different flavors with different colors. But I'm curious to see if they actually taste good. Color, color, which color do you choose? Let's try the virgin mojito. Ah, tastes like a mojito without the alcohol. You can see they've gone the extra mile. They put in fresh lemon, a lot of mint in there. Next one is Citra, which I assume is a mandarin slash orange flavor drink. Oh, nice. Very delicious, super refreshing. I thought this could be something we could make fun of Nando's for, but they've actually made some delicious, refreshing drinks. Hip dip do, the cat's got the flu, the dog's got the chicken pox, and so have you. Portuguese lemonade, let's go. What makes it Portuguese? I don't know. Maybe it's olive oil, let's see. This is really yum. So it's not all sweet. It has like some sort of powder at the bottom. Is it peri peri powder? I don't know, but it tastes like chaat powder that they put in a lot of lemon sodas here in India. And it's really yum. Peach and elderflower. They've actually put a slice of peach in there. These are certified designer drinks. Half a chicken, peri peri chips, and garlic bread at a UK Nando's will cost you 13 pounds and 10 pence. That same meal in India will cost you rupees 869, which at the time of filming this video is equal to 9.85 pounds. That's almost 25% cheaper of a meal than the one in the UK. Okay, now while you Brits might feel hard done by because of these price differences, I must say that this is actually super expensive for a single meal for a single person here in India. In fact, most people in this country would find that almost aspirational. You can get meals here for close to 100 rupees. That's less than a pound. I would say that I can't even consider this fast food. It is the most expensive restaurant we've tried here on Food Wars, but the food was top class throughout, so I guess it makes sense. Now, Nando's does have some slightly more affordable options in the form of meal deals, where you can get a single meal for around 400 rupees, which is equal to 4.5 pounds. This doesn't seem like a significant upgrade, and it isn't. In fact, the state that we're filming this video is Karnataka here in India and the daily wage is around 500 rupees. So you would have to literally work an entire day to afford a single meal here in Nando's. In fact, my first salary as an intern was 10,000 rupees per month, which is 125 pounds per month. And so if I ordered a cheeky Nando's, it would literally be nearly one tenth of my entire monthly salary. I'm not sure I'd consider Nando's an affordable option in the UK, and I'm not even really sure I'd consider it fast food. It sits somewhere in that kind of fast casual bracket, combining elements of fast food restaurants with elements of the more traditional dining experience. Some Brits don't really like Nando's and might claim that it's kind of overrated. I personally love Nando's. It's fast, it's consistent, and I have a kind of cultural attachment to it as I was kind of a teenager when it really blew up in popularity here in the UK. I might be able to get more value for money at somewhere like a KFC, but to me, it wouldn't hit the same. Unfortunately, Nando's in the UK doesn't disclose a full ingredients list. Nando's in India also doesn't disclose a full ingredient list. So what do we know about the food? Well, the FAQ pages on our respective websites do share some clues. For example, in the UK, Nando says it uses red tractor assured chicken from British farms. To be red tractor certified, chickens must be raised with certain benefits, such as no cages and natural light. The Indian FAQ page says that all of Nando's chicken in India is sourced from India and it's all cage free. They also say that all of their chickens are A grade. Now, I don't know what this means because it's hard to keep up with up to date poultry practices here in India. But one report from 2012 said that a top grade chicken must be free of deformities that detract from its appearance or that affect the normal distribution of flesh, slight deformities such as slightly curved or dented breast bones and slightly curved backs may be present. Now, this sounds kind of vague, but I do hope that Nando's is following this practice and only sourcing some A grade chickens because that's what it tasted like, some A grade chicken. One other thing we can glean from the FAQ page is that the great imitator wrap might not be as plant-based as Nando's seems to think it is. This is because both the tortilla wrap and also the glaze used on the chicken contain shellac. Shellac is a substance used in food as a glazing agent, but it's found in various other things such as nail polish, fireworks, and sealants. The twist is that it's technically an animal product. It's a resin secreted by lac beetles. Female lac beetles will secrete it onto trees in the forests of India and Thailand, where it's then harvested, processed, and sold for use. Do bugs count as animals for the purpose of veganism? I'm a meat eater, so I can't really talk, but in my opinion, I don't think a bug should count. I think that's fine. Hey everyone, it's Harry Kirsch from the Food Wars team. I finally got to meet my co-host Joe Avella for a cool new project we're working on called Food Tours. Here's a trailer for it now. It's, it's, oh yeah? It's so good, man. 
This thing is incredible. Joe oh my to, uh, god. <laughs> Can I shop you, Joe? I quite like this. Oh yeah. Yo, what's up with that egg over there? What is that? That's the gherkin. Oh, what is it really? <laughs> literally the gherkin. Isn't that yeah. the gherkin? People of the internet, you cannot expect me to pick this up with my hands. You know what, Harry? Up till now, I didn't get the whole cheeky Nando's meme, but now I kind of get it. I feel like they're having a lot of fun with all the food that they're serving, and I had so much fun eating all of the food. I feel like India should have its own version of the cheeky Nando's. We're gonna call it the Chalu Nando's because Chalu means kind of cheeky in uh, Hindi. 